Welcome to Thriving Tribesmen. My name is Corey, your host, and I'm excited to be making this episode. Today, we're going to be talking about unleashing unlimited sexual power within your relationship. Now, this is going to be an ex- it's been an exciting series. Spoken to a few guys, really excited about uh, where we're going to take this because yes, it definitely is going to be a video series based off of the questions that I got on Instagram. Definitely going to recap on some of the things that we're going to be doing and go dive in a little bit deeper. And I'll be at least when I'm teaching and showing you uh, graphs and to show uh, drawing stuff, it would be a little bit more visually appealing. So you, I'm appealing to more senses than just the one where you're listening, but I want to be getting your visuals as well. So it's easier to remember and it's easier to implement for you guys. So really excited about it. And we're going to be talking about dominance and we've I've told you guys about this, but I think it's relevant when it comes to you harnessing that uh, masculine energy. And this is what this whole entire course is about. You uh, getting to in tune with your masculine energy and being comfortable with it. And not just comfortable with it, but also being uh, comfortable to share it. And we, I've been using this word gravitas. And I'm saying it in that way because it sounds so nice when I say it. But it's really having a man of substance. So your, your woman feels that. Before you even say anything, she because there's something about this guy that I really, really like. So again, we're going to be doing this, and then some of a lot of that comes back down to dominance. Can you demonstrate dominance within your relationship? Now we have to reframe how you think about dominance and what it is, because I know, like I said, uh, some of you guys might think it's you tying up your partner and doing some kinky stuff, and she might. Actually, I like that, and and one day you will get to that point where she you can do that, and I'm be really happy for you guys. But at this moment in time, when it comes to dominance, it's more about three things, and you notice that there's a theme here. I always teach things in threes. I like that, but it makes it easier for you guys to digest some of the information. So, uh, when you break it down, oh, it's dominance, it's really understanding that there's three things that you need which is the ability to protect. Now, it's it's not you going out and looking for seeking out fighting people and doing stuff, but it's you having the presence of somebody who can protect. Now, I do Muay Thai and it's something that I completely enjoy. I like combat sports, I like UFC, I like watching boxing. Uh, I really like combat and I've always been involved in, in sort of some sort of martial arts and but because of that, I carry myself very differently to most men. And not that I, I walk around wanting to beat up somebody, and that's not what I'm saying, is that um, there's several times when I've been with my wife and there's been some really chaotic situations. And when those chaotic situations are presenting themselves, I'm usually the most calm because I know that if shit goes sideways, I've got it handled. That is a massive attractive trait for, for, for many women. Now, if it's not just on a confrontational, violent situation, but it's also on a physically demanding situation, I put my body on the line in order to make things safe, not just for my family, but for everyone. And again, it's not just from a physical handling perspective it's also on the mental side of things so when things are going terribly terribly wrong i'm capable of keeping a cool head and not allowing the stress of life stress of everything to overpower me to the point where i look weak so again I'm not saying, like, this is one of those nuanced things that I'm not saying that uh, if you're suffering with depression, don't speak to somebody. By all means, go and speak to somebody. Please don't don't hold your own inside and uh, bottle it all up. But what I'm saying in this sense that, you know, the day-to-day stuff when things are sort of just really getting on top of you and you're feeling under pressure, maybe there's a few deadlines that are uh, at work, there's a few things that you need to be trying to achieve, then it's getting away from you. The plans that you've had, they're not quite working out the way they're supposed to. And you're feeling a little bit sense of pressure and you still remain calm. When she sees that, she can appreciate the fact that it's almost the, the, I always think, imagine, imagine a captain of a ship and it's the stormy weather and the waves are really high and the ship seems like it's out of control. 
it's bouncing on the waves and looks crazy. And when you look across and you see your captain and you see him calm, all of a sudden you'll be like, okay, there's nothing to panic because my captain looks like he knows what he's doing. But if your captain was on the corner and he's crying and he's like, oh my God, I don't know what to do, then you'd be shitting yourself. So that's the difference. And it comes back down into that ability to protect. You're not just protecting them physically, but also from the fact that there's all sorts of stress that comes into your world and into your house. And you having the ability to be calm and being able to control it, it becomes very important. Now, it ties into the second bit, which is strategic thinking. So you have to have the ability to look further on in front, whether it is relationship goals, parenting goals, financial goals, whatever it is, you're got an ability to look and project in the future. This is what we're looking to achieve. And this is what it looks like. I mean, the other day we're talking about retirement with my wife. What does that look like? What does that mean financially? What does that mean where we're staying? What does that mean? And we're not there yet, but it gives us an opportunity to think about what that looks like in the in the future. Now, the reason why it's important, because it then dictates how you behave and engage now. So if I'm talking about my, my, insu- my, my uh, if we're talking about retirement and we're talking about pension, we're talking about finances in the future, what should we be doing now in order to make that a reality? And this is where things become a little bit different. So it means that you now start measuring a little bit different, you start doing all of these things a little bit different, how you behave from a relationship perspective, uh, what does that look like in the next few months? Okay, we're gonna have more frequency in sex, what does that look like? Uh, You seem to be uncomfortable right now, how do we deal with that uncomfortability? How do we get by uh, from that to more frequency how do we navigate that? So again, you see that how it becomes a, a, an interesting way of looking at dominance from a dominance perspective. When you think about having the ability to 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 withstand some some issues that are happening, uh, and the, the the ability to protect your family physically, to have to be capable to protect, uh, is a, a massive thing, and something that is massively attractive to women, and being able to be strategic to to think and say, I'm looking in the future, this is what where I should think we should be going, and this is the things that we need to be doing now. And it's the good part about this is that this is where you start building a lot of trust in terms of your leadership, because all of a sudden it takes the burden off her to having to think about what's going to happen in the future you are taking that burden so and she sees the future it actually starts easing the anxiety that she feels right now because now you've got this measuring um momentum places where you can measure milestones to where you're going for example if it's your relationship goals okay we've talked about your her sexual comfort how are we going to deal with that what does that look like in a few weeks what does that look like in a few months what does that look like in terms of frequency of sex? So you got this place where you're measuring, okay, we're going the right way. Okay, your discomfort is not working or your discomfort is not going away. So what can we do different, differently to make you feel more comfortable sexually? Do we need to take two steps back? Do we need to go forward? Do we need to go sideways? Whichever, it gives you an opportunity to actually start build trust with her to the point where you're getting to the place where you need to be. Now, you see how it's a little bit different to where you're thinking about dominance and why it ends up being powerful to understand dominance from this perspective. So I'm going to wrap up with this one. The last one is a little bit like the first one, but it's a bit different. It's more mental. You're having that resilience. The ability to, and uh, there's a quote, and I, I was writing uh, the, the laws of Kuri seduction, and is this one that comes to mind where... It says, always remain in a neutral state whether she says yes or no. And it comes back to resilience that you can't be affected by whether things go wrong or not. 
and I talked about a few months ago, I talked about decision making and outcomes. And I said, sometimes you can actually make a very good decision, but have a negative outcome. And the outcome isn't dependent on only on the fact that you've made a good decision. Um, and you see this, especially in sport, where there's a lot of va variables where they will make good decisions, a series of good decisions, but the wind took the ball <laughs> and it's gone somewhere else. So it's there. You can make decisions, and you can make decisions with the most likelihood of having a good outcome. But again, that outcome might not happen. So in a case where you're changing a sexless relationship, you have to show the ability to be resilient. Because while she's dealing with her discovering why sexual comfort has gone away from a sexual, sexual standpoint, when she's figuring out how to bust through that discomfort, it's going to take time. And it's going to need you to be resilient when she says no. And it needs you to be resilient when she says yes. And when I say this, people are like, what? what? When she says yes? Yeah. Your state should remain neutral. If she says no to you sexually, you remain neutral. When she says to you yes sexually, remain neutral. This is so empowering, it's unreal. If you get excited when she offers you sex and you don't remain in your neutral uh, state, it is you instantly validating her that she's in control of the sex. What a bummer. <laughs> because some of you guys, if, if you've just realized what has happened in your relationship. Don't worry, I'll give you a moment. You probably need it. Every time you got exceptionally excited when she's offered you sex, essentially you're, te you're, telling her, you're telling her that she was um, in control. And therefore she decided, I'm, I'm in control. I'm not really bothered about sex. Women don't, don't behave sexually that, like, the way we do. So therefore you find yourself in the way where, where you are right now, where you, there's sexual discomfort. So resilience is massive, massive. Um, like I said, it ties into that, you having that neutral, neutral state, that whether she says yes, you're, you're cool, or she says no, you're cool. And it's within every other decision that happens that when you do make a decision, it's okay to, to fuck up with the decisions. And when you do, you don't allow you to mess up the rest of your decision-making process. You just reanalyze how you made that decision and see that if anything that you can change within your decision making process can change the outcome if not you have to make the same decision and then see if it might change the outcome based on circumstances time month year um, person you know <laughs> you, uh, it, there's so many variables when you make decisions and your resiliency is what then when you can show that resiliency is a very attractive trait. And this is what being a man is. You know, you're gonna get moments where you're meant to make decisions and you have to make those decisions, sometimes quickly, sometimes you take your time, but whenever you make those decisions, you make them in a manner that is timely to influence the outcome. And I, I know this is not the decision-making lesson, but I think with resilience, it sort of comes in and ties into that. And you having the ability to Get a yes or a no and then be okay or at least resilient enough to continue making decisions until you get the outcome that you want is extremely powerful. So, guys, if you want to learn more about this and you've got any questions, you've got any suggestions, go to thriving underscore tribesmen on our Instagram and we can ask anything that you want. We're not add you as a friend or follow you or do anything like that is strictly kept on the DMs. We want your you to, to follow us and or ask those questions. We know that you're interested. So when we release the video course, we can give you a link so you can join the, to be free. You can access it for free. So 
pretty excited about this is our process calling we call it unleashing unlimited sexual power so that's gonna be absolutely exciting so thank you very much guys we'll be seeing you guys soon take care <laughs>